Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this edition, we'll go through the process of configuring a multi-point wireless I.O. gateway to connect two remote I.O. devices to our control center. A multi-point wireless I.O. gateway and the appropriate I.O. expansion cards will be installed at each location, serving as point to multi-point wire replacement. In this instance, Gateway 1 in our control center will have inputs driving the outputs in Gateway 2 and Gateway 3 by mapping the discrete input on Gateway 1 to the discrete output on Gateways 2 and 3. We'll also map some analog I.O. from our Gateway 1 out to Gateway 2. To do this, we will be using ProSoft Wireless I.O. Builder software. We'll create a project set up the wireless gateways, bring in our I.O. modules, and then map our inputs and outputs to where we want them to go. The multi-point wireless I.O. gateways can also read and write to Modbus registers. So if you would like to learn how to integrate data from Modbus devices into your network, we have another video that deals with configuring the multi-point gateways to work with Modbus data. Let's begin. We'll open up the ProSoft Wireless I.O. Builder. It's just an .exe file that you can put on your desktop. We'll create a new project. This will open up the project creation wizard that will walk us through the steps of configuring our gateways. We'll give the project a name and we'll choose a file location and then click Next. We'll select the frequency and there are three different frequencies available. Be sure to pick the frequency that matches the radio in your gateway. In my case, I'm using the 900 megahertz model. By default, the channel is set to zero. It's good practice to always select a different channel just to minimize the chances of crowding the same channel. Finally, we can set our group. In this instance, the term group is used to refer to individual multipoint wireless I.O. gateways and whatever I.O. modules they are connected to. By default, the first gateway you add will be assigned group 0, and the next gateway you add will be assigned to group 1, and so on. All you need to know is that you can't have two gateways with the same group number on the same network. Next, we'll configure the primary wireless gateway. We'll give our gateway a name. This is what we'll see inside the project. We can select the power output to the antenna. Be sure to select 10 milliwatts or higher for any sort of real application. And we have our Modbus RTU settings. You only need to concern yourself with this if you're connecting your gateways to third-party Modbus devices. Again, we have another video that covers that configuration. So click finish and we'll confirm this. Now our project is set up and we can see our gateway in the project tree here. Any other gateways that we bring into the project will show up here and they'll inherit most of the communication parameters that we entered for the primary gateway. You can hit the green plus sign and select YO gateway. Be sure you have site one highlighted when you do this. And there is gateway two. Now you can also just right click and select insert and then select YO gateway as well. By default, the new gateways are named gateway two, three, four, and so on. If you want to give them specific names, you right click on the respective gateway and select rename. So my primary gateway is named base station and my two other gateways I'll call holding tank one and holding tank two. To access any of the gateway properties, you would highlight the gateway and click the edit button in the control bar or right click and select edit. And here you have access to some of the radio properties as well as the config port, the RTU port, and the IO bus, which is where you can integrate wireless I.O. expansion modules. Any I.O. modules you add to a wireless I.O. gateway becomes an extension of the gateway. Thus, the I.O. points are all accessible through the gateway's properties. So with that in mind, we'll go to the I.O. bus tab, click new, 
and select an I.O. module. We have three different modules to choose from. In this case, we'll go with a digital I.O. module. Under module settings, we need to set the module ID to match the dial setting on the module itself. Each module in the group must have its own unique ID. And note that the module ID dial cannot be reset with the power on, so you can't set it to a different ID on the fly. It's because the ID is only read by the gateway once on startup. So if you need to set the dial on an IO module to a different ID, you'll have to power down the group, set the dials, and then power back on. We can see the module name here. It's just derived from the ID number. We can set the interval. Lowest setting is one second. And we can choose what to bring into the imports table. This only applies to the digital module type. You'll see the difference uh, from the analog I.O. modules in a little bit. To begin, I'm just going to add the inputs. And when you're finished, click OK, and then click OK again on the Gateway Properties window. And we'll add a digital I.O. module for each of the other gateways, making sure each one is configured with the proper module ID. Now for clarity, I'm giving each new module that I add to the project its own unique ID. But really, you only need to worry about the modules connected to each individual gateway having unique IDs amongst themselves. So now that we have some discrete I.O. added to each of our groups, I'm going to go back in and add an analog I.O. module to my base station. This will be a 4 to 20 milliamp module and we'll make sure the module ID is right, and we can select what engineering units we'd like to use. I'm not gonna make any changes here. So click OK and OK again, and now I'll add the same module to one of the other groups. Again, making sure the module ID is correct, and here I'll set the output one to zero to 100%. Now we can map our data. What we would like to do is pass our input one from our base station to the outputs of holding tank one and holding tank two. To do that, all we have to do is double click on base station and then click on the imports tab, then select M0 digital input one. The M0 refers to module zero. Click once on holding tank one, then click on the import button in the toolbar. This will bring input one from our base station as a source into our holding tank one. We get a confirmation window with the source group and the points we're about to map. If you're sending Modbus data, you can specify if you want to map it as an integer or a float. Click OK. Now we can double click on holding tank one and go to the imports tab. And we can see the entry here for the point that we just brought over. Source base station point digital input one. We'll select this point, right click and copy. Then go to the output tab, select the output one, right click and select paste output source. Now we can see that the digital input one from base station is the source for output one on holding tank one. And that is the basic procedure for mapping data between the gateways. We can confirm this by going back to base station and clicking on the exports tab. Here we can see that digital input one on change is going into holding tank one. And we'll just repeat this process for holding tank two. We'll double click on base station, select input one, single click on holding tank two, click the import button, then open up holding tank two and go to the imports tab and select the new point, copy and paste it to the output one. Now we have source input one on the base station to output one on holding tank two. And if we go back to base station, and look at the exports tab, we can see that the input one here is mapped to both holding tank one and holding tank two. If we had a switch wired into our input one 
on the digital I.O. module of the base station, it could turn pumps wired up to the outputs of holding tank 1 and 2 on and off. We'll map our analog inputs now. I'd like to map analog input 1 and 2 on base station to analog output 1 and 2 on holding tank 1. And I'll show you how to map multiple inputs at a time. With base station selected, I'll go to the Imports tab. I'll select Module 3, Analog Input 1, and Analog Input 2. With them both highlighted, click once on the group with the Analog Module. For me, it's Holding Tank 1, and click Import. We'll say OK on the Confirmation window, and we'll select the new points in the Imports tab on Holding Tank 1. We'll copy go to the output tab and then I'll select module 4 analog out 1 and 2 and I'll paste. Now the two analog inputs on base station are driving the two analog outputs on holding tank 1. So with our configuration set and our points mapped we want to save this configuration file. Then, with your computer plugged into the configuration port on the front of your primary gateway, double-click on the primary gateway in the tree view and hit the Update Device button in the toolbar. This will send the configuration to the gateway. We'll get a progress bar that lets us know when the update is finished, and when this is done, we'll have to plug into each of the other gateways, making sure that they are selected in the tree view, and update them as well. Anytime you make changes to the communication parameters or the mapping of points on a gateway, you're going to have to plug in and update the configuration. An important thing to note is the site security key function. The multipoint wireless I.O. gateways are designed to only communicate with other multipoint wireless I.O. gateways that have the same security key in their configuration files. When you create a new project in ProSoft Wireless I.O. Builder, a new site security key is automatically generated and every gateway that's updated with this project file will be assigned that security key. If you go up to File and select Save As, this will be regarded as a new configuration file and it will generate a new key. Any groups within a network that are updated with this new file could potentially be assigned the new key and would then be unable to communicate with any other groups on the network. So what you just need to keep in mind is that if you're setting up a gateway for the first time, whenever you hit update, it will update the file without incident. But if the gateway has been configured previously, you'll get a screen asking if you want to update the key or ignore it. If you're setting up a new network and are already planning on updating all of the gateways on the network, you should choose update since you want to use this new security key anyway. If, however, you have an existing network that's already up and running and you just want to make a change on the configuration of one of the gateways, you should ignore the new security key. That way it will continue using the old key that it already has and that all the other gateways on the network are still using and communication will go uninterrupted. You can also retrieve a security key from the gateway and use it in place of the key generated by the project file by using the key button in the toolbar to read the site security key from the gateway. So as far as mapping inputs to outputs, that's really all there is to it. You just follow this same procedure. That does it for this training session. If you have any questions or would like more information on this product, visit our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. Until next time, happy training.